Alright guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top, beautiful, little bit chilly windy day here in the uh, Point Lonesome Swamp as I guess the tatters of this uh, polar vortex blowing through the Sunshine State, it is a bone rattling 48 degrees, it is 24 degrees cooler than it was yesterday morning here on this gorgeous Saturday morning, that would be February 20th, 2021, and uh, I got a lot on my plate today, but before me and the little dog head out, we have some unbelievably good news with, of course, a larger backdrop of bad news. But anyway, guys, Hambone, little tail, uh, the COVID idiot himself, yes, the COVID idiot himself wants to hereby retract everything I, every trash talking I have ever done about the Corona panic. I want to hear uh, three cheers for the Corona panic uh, today as we see the number one story on the planet. This was the number one story uh, yesterday at least. And that is the who is this from? This good old Yahoo News itself. The Corona Panic Baby Bust. That's the good news, obviously. And the risks of declining birth rates. And this, of course, is the bigger story. Is how, you know, the mainstream, you know, Yahoo News, the mainstream media, this entire culture from cradle to grave immediately equates declining birth rates as bad news and increasing birth rates as good news. But, but let's hear the good news uh, before we get into, of course, the larger story. <clears throat> so what is happening with the baby bust? At the start of the corona panic lockdowns, some predicted that all the time Americans spent indoors with little to do <coughs> would lead to a baby boom. It will be several months still before definitive data is available, but the evidence suggests that the corona panic <coughs> will actually lead to a baby bust. Hallelujah. The combined influence of stress, economic uncertainty, and fewer opportunities for people to meet. Yes, uh, fewer opportunities for people to meet, tell me about it, could lead to as many as 500,000 fewer babies born this year in 2021, one study has found. Any corona panic baby bust would extend a trend that has seen U.S. birth rates decline since the start of the Great Recession. In 2019, the average American woman could be expected to have 1.7 children, the lowest rate ever recorded in 1958. Uh, that's when Santa Claus and my mother uh, I was born uh, nine months after Christmas Eve. In 1958, at the height of the baby boom, that figure was 3.5 children per woman. <clears throat> Lower birth rates <coughs> are not just a statistical curiosity. Economist. Economist. And of course, that's the only one we need to talk to is economist. That is, uh, whenever this discussion comes up, what do these uh, clueless fucking moron reporters do? They run to talk to economists. It is the economy, stupid. The only facet of this that 99.9% .9 of the clueless fucking morons on this planet are concerned about or is what economists have to say. And this sets up one of the most dangerous 
uh, bright red lies of the 21st century. And well, not just the 21st century, the 20th century, the 19th century, the 18th century. The, the one, one, perhaps the fundamental lie on this planet. Economists fear that the U.S. could be headed for what some call a, quote, demographic time bomb, a situation in which a country's working age population is too small to support its retired citizens. Such a scenario can have a devastating effect on a nation's economy. In Japan, a surging elderly population and shrinking workforce has caused a national crisis, resulting in a labor shortage, slowed economic growth, and a sharp rise in government spending. So why is there debate over this issue? That, that is exactly my question, Yahoo News. Why is there debate? Why is there any fucking human being on this planet debating uh, whether declining birth rates are good news or bad news for this planet? Okay, they may or may not be bad news for the economy. Okay, uh, on every other measure, declining birth rates are the only ray of hope left on this planet. Anyway, so why is there debate about this? Research indicates that declining birth rates are closely related to, closely correlated to economic uncertainty. Polls show that Americans on average want larger families than they currently have. Americans want larger families than they currently have, but when people lack confidence in their circumstances, such as is there going to be a livable planet for their children to inherit, inherit are, are those, is that what they're talking about? People lacking confidence in their circumstances, they are less likely to feel comfortable having children. Government support in the form of free childcare, government support, read taxpayer support, taxpayer funded support in the form of free childcare, you know, for more of the bundles of joy, uh, maternity care, you know, free maternity care for the clueless fucking breeders, paid leave, and even direct monthly payments to parents paid for by the American taxpayer, uh, we are supposed to, to write a check every month, I guess what, for 18 fucking years to every one of these clueless uh, breeders. It is the American taxpayers who are going to write a, write a direct monthly check to every child uh, on this planet. Yeah, this is a this is a, a great way to reduce levels of government spending. Yes, uh, I, uh, that is quite the cure for that. Yes, others call for eliminating motherhood penalties that often force women to delay having children so they don't suffer professionally. Motherhood penalties. If we want to talk about fucking penalties on this goddamn planet, it is the non-breeder penalty. It, it is cradle-to-grave penalty for anybody uh, not... Uh, you know, choosing not to have children, and of course, the the main way this uh, manifests in most of our our lives for people who pay property taxes, and that is the public school system. I have paid in my life. I have never had a child spend one minute in a public school. I have probably paid two hundred thousand dollars. I'm guessing to fund the public schools
for other clueless fucking moron breeders, and they're talking to me about motherhood penalties. Is it, what's what's this fucking tax credit uh, there? You, you know, in the in the income tax, the IRS tax credit. We're already uh, paying uh, these clueless fucking moron breeders motherhood penalties. It, 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 my God, uh, we need a fucking motherhood penalty all on this planet. Motherhood penalties should be the single biggest uh, penalty on the planet. A change in cultural mindset, others say, can, go, can also go a long way towards increasing the U.S. birth rate. Everything in our cultural mindset from the moment we are born till the moment we die, including unadulterated horseshit, uh, like this crap being the number one story on the mainstream media. Uh, the entire planet-wide cultural mindset going back at least uh, 2,000 years, shall we say, uh, has been towards increasing the birth rate. Go forth and multiply. Cultural mindset uh, can go a long way toward increasing the U.S. birth rate uh, as obviously the fucking mainstream media 100% dependent on advertising revenue is going to be the number one cheerleader of this. Uh, other countries, other countries, you know, outside of the U.S. have launched national campaigns urging their citizens to have more children if Americans understood the long-term dangers that low fertility rates pose, they will be more willing to set aside their short-term financial concerns, some say. Yes, if Americans understood the long-term dangers, how about the long-term dangers that high fertility rates pose. High fertility rates are, for any clueless fucking moron not getting this, high fertility rates are the number one biggest threat to all life on planet Earth, including human life. The number one biggest threat to this planet is the 180 degree opposite of the threat that this fucking bullshit uh, number one story on the planet is talking about. I, I really want to puke. <clears throat> All right, and finally, <clears throat> others argue that declining birth rates are actually a good thing. Wow. Reduced fertility can be seen as a side effect of women gaining more authority over their major life decisions. Yes. Uh, there are also concerns that boosting the population will exacerbate climate change <coughs> by increasing demand for fossil fuels. Yes, how about that? And again, you know, as, I, as I've said how many times, at least climate change, how about the demand for fossil fuels, the demand for food, the demand for water, the demand for housing, the demand for autos, uh, the, the demand for appliances, the demand for smartphones, the demand for giant flat screen TVs. Uh, the demand for dogs, the demand for cats, the demand for roads, the demand for buildings, the demand for asphalt, the demand for airplanes, uh, the, the demand that we uh, exterminate every fucking fellow human off the planet. They left out those demands. All right, and so then what they do is 
they I, I'm not going to go through us. So what they do is they get perspectives. So they go out and interview this law, this wide range of people on the subject. So how many perspectives do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So okay, they interview ten people about this, uh, you know, people who they, they figure uh, can speak intelligently on this, I guess, and uh, how many of the ten uh, say that declining birth rates are a bad thing and how many say that declining birth rates are a good thing? Okay, I know a lot of you, my guess would have been zero, but they had to throw one bone. Nine out of ten people, nine out of ten people talking about how we need to do everything we can in this country uh, uh, to uh, increase the birth rate. Uh, okay, we have one person, I don't know who Joseph Cheney is, saying a low birth rate makes many problems more manageable. In brief, slower U.S. population growth is not alarming. Moving gradually towards population stabilization is not a panacea for America's problems. However, it will make it easier to address problems such as climate change, environmental degradation, poverty, homelessness, extreme socioeconomic inequalities, and human rights abuses. Close quote. Thank you, Joseph Cheney, whoever you are, for being the one fucking person out of the ten people here weighing in on this as 90% of the people they interview, you know, mostly I'm sure some form of economist calling declining birth rates uh, one of the biggest threats to this country and assumedly this planet. We are so fucked. Well, that's a little log. What do you think? You say, Bop, I think it's time for me to go poop. Anyway, guys, uh, we got a lot on the plate, and I still have to go over there to Collapse Chronicles and look at the newest UN Doomsday Report. Imagine that, another Doomsday Report from the United Nations, which will never mention the word overpopulation anywhere in their latest doom and gloom forecast. And you can take that to the bank. Bye guys.